So while you're doing that, I'd like to introduce our next guest. Our, our next guest is Dr. William Bird. William Bird will be known to many of you. He's a practicing GP. He's the founder and chief exec of Intelligent Health. And he's also the creator of Green Gyms, Beat the Streets and the Health Walks program. So I'm going to hand over to William now to talk for about five minutes and add to what Shane has been discussing. And then William, Shane and I are going to join each other on the screen for, for a good blether about what we've just been talking about. So welcome, William, and over to you. Thank you very much. And uh, that's um, thank you very much indeed. And what an amazing talk we've just been hearing. Um, so I'm going to just introduce really the kind of the next discussion that we're going to be making. But I just wanted to kind of perhaps capture a few things that Shane has said and also how that is going to, you know, kind of help us understand about walking, what the central role of it is um, as we move forward in a in a bad winter, which we're going to have, and then post winter. So I think the first thing I'd just like to pick up from what Shane was saying right at the end was about the immunity. And when I talk to patients about, you know, they ask, how can I not get COVID? How can I survive this winter intact and with my family and feel safe? And of course, walking is one of the main things that we can offer. Um, and the reason is, as Shane pointed out, these sort of myokines, this immune system, which is stimulated by the muscle. So when we start to contract the muscle um, through brisk walking, we actually create what these are called natural killer cells. Natural killer cells, which is a great name for these um, little molecules that come out, they're part of the immune system, um, part of the cytokines. And what they do is they mop up the virus before it gets into the body. So they're sitting there at the nasal cavity, the epithelium, in the lungs themselves. And they're on the prowl all the time. There are scouts that are looking out for any nasties coming through, including cancer cells. Um, but it definitely helps to grab a coronavirus if it does get in and kill it before it has a chance to replicate and get into the cells. So that's the first part. So walking and being active is incredibly important um, to do that. But there's another part as well, which is um, as important, if not perhaps more important as far as um, COVID-19 is concerned, is that when you are walking, you reduce the inflammation of the body and that means that your immune system if you're very overweight or if you're very inactive your immune system starts to fight against you and it's basically one of the things in the body that the adipose tissue around your middle um, the visceral fat is actually quite toxic and the immune system is fighting against it because the cells don't quite get the oxygen and the nutrient because they just grow bigger instead of just multiplying the fat cells in your adipose get bigger they get so big that the inside of them starts to die off and that creates an inflammatory response. So you get this inflammation in the body. As coronavirus gets to day six or seven, the body moves from a, a, an innate um, response of the immune system, which is what we've talked about with the cytokines, to an adaptive response, which is when you start to get the um, immune system into antibodies. And at that point, if the body is already inflamed, you get this cytokine storm, which is what is causing so many problems for people who go into intensive care units. So this is one of the issues that we've been trying to get across to patients, which works. And people really understand that. And of course, stress, the mental stress while you've got COVID is so huge. And going for a walk, particularly in nature, and we know that nature has that big impact on the brain, um, can actually help reduce the stress and stress in itself reduces the body's immune system. So if you have those two things, um, the immune system itself through the innate immune system and adaptive, which the body can be helped by walking and then reduction in stress by being outdoors, then you've got this fantastic response. But we unfortunately know that during the lockdown, those in the least, um, the most deprived areas actually did less walking, but their walking went down. And those in the most affluent areas, their walking went up. So the divide has increased during COVID. And that's something we've got to be really aware of and try and sort out. And, and I think, you know, the fear as well in the older people, it's only 20% of people in their elderly actually started to 
improve, whereas 80% went the other way around, whereas for younger people, it's about 50-50. So that's one of the areas which I think is going to be the most important. And I think the final thing, just to pick up from you know, what Shane was saying about place, is that when you have a place which is not geared for walking, it's really hard to walk. Um, it, you don't want to, because walking should be a positive experience. There are very few of us that will walk because we have to, or because we must. Most of us want to walk because we love it and we enjoy it. And you know, one of the things we're doing with Beat the Street is to try and get people to do that first walk with their child to school, or that first walk to work, or that exploration of the park or canal down a road. So people start to enjoy and start to take in the nature and the place and the history of that area. But if it's a really negative experience, and of course, if you're living in a deprived area, you're going to have one of those dreadful kind of monolithic areas where you've got no culture at all. And you've got cars and you've got increased air pollution. Therefore, the experience of walking is not as good. So that's another area where the divide, the inequalities is increasing. And I think one of the big areas we've got to work on at the moment is making places better for people to walk, particularly in areas where there's deprivation. That has to be a real focus. And then, of course, you've got all the um, other problems of the stress and the inability to want to get out um, during COVID, which is divide it into inequalities where those least most deprived are not doing it. And also we know the elderly as well are not. So we are creating this division, which is really worrying. Um, so I think I'm going to hand back now um, to Ian and we're going to just have a discussion um, which will hopefully just help explore some of those areas.